So hormone replacement therapy in women and the treatment, uh, which is kind of a misnomer, and prevention of osteoporosis in these women. And again, my name is Dr. Prusak, and I come from Boston, uh, Leahy Clinic, and I'm a minimally invasive uh, pelvic surgeon there and a uh, menopausal women's health specialist. So just some objectives of uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms of osteoporosis, how to diagnose women um, with osteoporosis, what are the, uh, some of the common uh, scans that are used, why do women get osteoporosis, what age ranges are the most common, um, how do you diagnose it, uh, is bone mineral density testing even worth it, and what kind of testing should you do. And then um, I'm going to speak about the last part of my talk um, on hormone replacement therapy and who is a good candidate for the prevention of osteoporosis. So as we all know, just seeing me with my broken foot up here, um, fractures and osteoporosis are very common in the United States. There's over 1.5 million fractures per year. Um, and, you know, it's not just limited to women, but it is almost over a fourfold um, increase in women uh, than men. Uh, 8 million women and uh, 2 million men have osteoporosis. It's most common in what you would think of as the, the tall, skinny, um, white woman, a very low BMI, um, that sort of picture. And as women go into postmenopausal years, their bone mass begins to decline very rapidly. Um, and one of the problems are is not so much just having osteopenia or low bone mass, but in osteoporosis, it actually causes women to have hip, fra hip fractures. And that really um, is important because over 50% of women, they never really fully recover from the hip fracture, and they're not really uh, able to do any of the exercises or the weight-bearing exercises that we recommend to help with their osteoporosis. So sometimes they're very incapacitated after a hip fracture. A lot of these women will have to go into a nursing home or have long-term uh, health care. And um, people, actually, the lifetime risk um, of death from the hip fracture is actually equal to breast cancer. So osteoporosis is, in most cases, it's preventable, and in most cases, it's treatable. I mean, we can only do so much in medicine. We try our... Uh, normal Western medicine and a lot of uh, people, they, they've tried um, non-Western medicine too, different hormones, different testing. So I'll talk about that um, at the end of the talk too, how we can do that. So the signs and symptoms, um, what we mo mainly focus on, I know that we were kind of joking about my, my foot being a fracture, but actually the foot is not one of the places that we typically will focus on for our testing. So a DEXA scan, um, which I'll talk about in a couple slides, um, is going to check the two main areas um, of a woman's body. And some of the symptoms and signs that women might have are going to be back pain, loss of height over time. You might notice that you're getting shorter. Like, gosh, I used to be five foot nine, and now I'm shorter than my, my brother. So, um, and then uh, fractures. And most of the time, that's going to be um, a fracture in a large bone. It's not just going to be like having a fracture in your little toe or something like that. So um, just comparing, again, osteoporotic fractures in men and women, they're definitely much higher um, in, in women. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that as women, uh, they do live longer. So they have an increased risk of getting fractures just because that they're living a lot longer than men. So some of the causes, um, so the strength of bone is dependent upon two things, the mass and the density, and it's a continuous balance of changing and remodeling. So basically there's creation and then there's breakdown. And when you have a child, your creation is going to be greater than the breaking down. So that's why that uh, children typically, when they, if they do break a bone, they recover very quickly and they're back on the swing set in the next week. Um, but as you get older in life, even when you're in your 30s, um, that's when your peak bone mass is going to be. So after that, the breaking down is going to be less than the creation, which is why that we have increased risk of fractures. And women in that 50 to 60 age range have a markedly increase because of estrogen decrease. So as women are going into menopause um, around uh, late 40s, early 50s, they're going to really start to see that prevention of osteoporosis from estrogen decrease. 
Um, and it's it's really surprising, though, you know, that men at age 65 have, have the same rate of creation and breakdown still. So they go through that much later in life uh, than a woman. So some of the most common risk factors are going to be female age, advancing age. If a woman has went through early menopause, like let's say if she's went through a premature menopause, either surgically or naturally, and that's defined as less than the age of 40 um, for a woman, then you're going to be at significant risk. If you're white, if you're Caucasian, um, if you do have low calcium intake, so you know the fact that um, you know, your mom tells you to drink three glasses of milk a day, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> um, if you've been on any type of chronic steroid use, um, if you have a history of a fracture, and again, the type of fracture is an important uh, point. Smoking, smoking greatly increases your risk of osteoporosis. So as you know, we found in medicine now, it's not only just telling our young women when they come in about smoking for lung cancer, but it's also um, for fracture risk. I mean, gosh, I expanded in the office all the time talking about even abnormal PAPs because, uh, you know, we know now that even uh, smoking increases your risk for abnormal pap smears. So there's a big variety of things that you can kind of talk about to the young girls when they come in and be, you know, non-judgmental, but say, look, you know, there's so many now things that smoking is, is really bad for. And also your family history is important. So that's what an osteoporotic bone looks like. So as you can see, you have extensive trabecular uh, bone loss, and it just looks like, I mean, you could just see that thing is just ready to almost crumble in front of your face. So um, when do we go in for our bone mineral density? Um, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of the times I think even my own mom went way before 65. Um, and the, it's, it's okay to test early, but technically the guidelines um, from ACOG, our American College of Gynecologists, are going to be all women 65 or older. However, as I mentioned, that there are so many different risk factors. And um, there is a, a very good practice bulletin actually from our um, ACOG uh, website that's really good, and it lists a whole page of um, risk factors that women can have that would initiate early bone min mineral density scanning. So it's really not that tough to have something elicited from the women's, hi the women's history where the insurance will cover our bone mineral density. And it's a cheap and it's an easy test and women tend to be okay with going to get it early because you just say, oh, it's just an x-ray and it's not painful at all. It's not like going in for an MRI and you have to have claustrophobia and that sort of thing. So it's a pretty easy test.